First, you, you take on projects that you are uh, told to do. Uh, but slowly, you start making your own opinion. So, you know, you start challenging your, your own projects and you ask yourself, what value uh, are these projects really bringing? Um, and, you know, when I was uh, defending my projects, pushing them to make it launch on time and sometimes also pushing them to some countries that didn't necessarily see the use, um, I, I slowly realized that, um, you know, taking orders was, um, it, it, it was, it was easy and it was cool. Uh, but I still had a brain and I still had values and opinions and uh, I really wanted to get them out there uh, too. So um, the first uh, slide uh, here is, uh, and this is also uh, my first lesson and big lesson, is to know your values uh, and know your purpose. So what happens once you get busy with uh, working full time, uh, often we forget to step back and to really think about our why. So when we fail to step back uh, and reassess our actions, uh, sometimes it can lead to uh, what I believe is not necessarily a bad thing that can happen to an individual, but we call it a burnout. It's actually a big thing in Europe. Uh, but it doesn't always have to reach that point. So whether your, your dream is to bring world peace or to make the world more sustainable or to bring a smile uh, to people's face, uh, it's important to really take the time to think about your why. And you need to be honest with yourself. Like, uh, what are really your values? And is what you are doing on a day-to-day -day basis aligned with those values? If not, what are the compromises that are you taking and what is your exit plan if those values start to become too violated? My, my strongest value um, is that doing something good uh, and uh, making money uh, is not the opposite because uh, ultimately you know the value you bring um, to a consumer uh, is defined by an individual. So it is defined by one person and uh, we are a natural being. Uh, so even though some resources can be uh, limited, nature works in a way that is completely abundant. So what is created uh, eventually will disappear and will be transformed into something else. This is how it goes. So often we are the one who, who fuck it up uh, with uh, you know, win or lose mindsets. And we, we see compromises where actually there are no compromises. So don't feel like a fool for wanting to make the world a better place. And why is it very critical uh, right now? Because, uh, well, we are in a post-apocalyptic world or maybe a pre-apocalyptic world, I don't know. Uh, but uh, the thing is that uh, all the services, uh, you know, hardware, uh, digital products, and also physical products that are delivered to people's uh, home are being completely reinvented. So now is really the time. And if we don't push for the changes that we want to see in our generation, then nobody else will. So the next uh, slide uh, and the next lear learning is uh, to understand your power. Now, this is something really important. And I believe on, on my journey, it's perhaps uh, something that I didn't understand at the beginning. So whether you are a, a digital product manager, uh, if you are making hardware, software, fragrances, or vegetable stock pots like me, the, the story is the same. You are, uh, I truly believe you are a powerful magician. That's why I put uh, Rick and Morty on this uh, slide and I'm a big fan of this show. <laughs> so um, on the next slide, um, so you can ask yourself a question, what is a product? So a product is always a combination of three elements, matter, energy, and information. So for example, a shoe is made of leather, rubber, and so on. For an application, it would be a, a computer or phone screen, and then the product would be made of lights and pixels. Um, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I just, okay. Um, so yeah, it would be made of lights or, or, or pixels, and this is, you know, like the material part, part of it. And then the material uh, in, in the shoe, uh, would take a specific form that, uh, that is defined by the, the designer's choice. Uh, and these choices that the designer made are uh, basically information that, that are encoded in the design. 
And this can also apply to the, the mental labor of uh, engineers or, or programmers uh, working on, on a digital product. And then you have the process of formi forming the material, like uh, shaping the shoe with a different material or shaping the app. And uh, this process requires the application of energy that is guided by information. So this can be manufacturing or even just using the energy of tapping your fingers to code on a computer. Uh, and at the end of this process, product that you can deliver, um, uh, the product will deliver value to customers or to individuals. And that's why I really believe that makes you a magician because you know, with your fingers, you can make something, something real and something material. And so with, with that power that you have, you are actively creating the future you live in. So never underestimate that, uh, that power, regardless of, of whether you are started, started in your field or if you are a manager, if you're super experienced. Your power is always this fresh energy, even if you like experience into something, because uh, what is experience when, when you can do magic? Next uh, lesson uh, and next slide is trust your guts. This is super important. Trusting your guts does not happen overnight. For me, there was really a before and after. Uh, and uh, especially getting other people to trust your guts is even harder. But it was extremely critical for me. When I realized I really had to, to keep standing for what I believe in. And uh, even if that meant uh, using different type of influence when you could not really influence the, the process. For example, uh, if you go and whisper an idea into the ear of some highly influential person, uh, and then you make that person think that this ID is their ID, uh, and then you step back and, and you watch things happen, and, and you watch this person selling this ID, and, and you, you see it happening in reality. Or that can also mean, um, that can also mean killing your own project. So that's some things that sometimes I would do, so I would, sabotage a little bit some project because I knew that clearly it was going against the vision and that we needed to save resources for what really matters. Uh, then uh, on the next slide, the slide after that, yes, learn to influence and to kill, uh, get the right allies. Uh, again, I put the avatar because I'm a big fan of this show. It's one of my favorite uh, hero, you know, the airbender. Uh, so yeah, get the right ally. So see, you may have a boss that will uh, never uh, encourage you to trust your guts. Uh, and uh, one of my big learning, you know, in business is really to stay away from this type of boss. You can go to the next slide. So if you don't see yourself becoming like your boss, uh, do not work from, for, for them. I know it's easier said than done, but when you think about it, if you stay too long, you, you will become like that eventually. But if you must be patient, which had been my case in the past, what you can do is find a, a coach or a mentor within your company and um, ask them for support or guidance. Find someone who has more power than you um, in, in the structure, uh, but also someone who resonates with you and with your values. This was one of my first move and uh, luckily my mentor eventually became my boss. So besides a mentor or a coach, uh, you may also want to find uh, allies who share your vision. So that could be like colleagues. So on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, something you can do is to, to bring up uh, questions and perspectives that might be overlooked uh, generally. For example, um, you know, ask for a sustainable, sustainability assessment aside of the business case to guide a certain decision or bring a point about data privacy where you see that something has been overlooked. Uh, that way, you, you, you build an environment of trust around you and your allies um, will feel safe to do the same. And you, you might be extremely surprised to find out how many people care, uh, but uh, it's just that a lot of them do not dare to burst the bubble. Uh, so uh, the next learning is uh, resistance to change. So resistance to change is, is only human. So, like any you know, newcomer in any job, in any industry, one of the first trauma you, you, you will have is the good old resistance to change. Uh, but where does this reason, uh, resistance come from? So one of the big reasons is um, the fear of the unknown and the fear of failure. So people are resistant to change until 
they realize it's necessary to relieve some pain. Uh, next slide. And it is your job to discover the extent of that pain. So it's your job to highlight how the risks of standing still are greater than the risk of moving into another direction. And ultimately, if you want to go a bit deeper than that, uh, really a key blocker is strong emotional connection to, uh, to the old way or to, or to any idea or, or way of working. Um, and it's very difficult even within yourself to accept that everything is temporary, especially in business. Um, but no, the goal is to trigger that acceptance uh, in, within other people. Uh, and that requires a bit of you know, emotional work, uh, which is not always easy. For me, it's not my, uh, my strength point, but it's necessary to really you know, give that confidence to a human being that is in front of you um, to move forward. Uh, um, then, uh, next slide, so my sixth learning is uh, to choose your battle wisely. My motto is, always go where you can build the new rather than fight the old. Uh, I would say, like in general, directly uh, attacking the core business and the profitability drivers is, is harder or just a bad idea. Um, but uh, the best way to go usually is to find ways to demonstrate growth through uh, innovations. Um, so by doing so, you, you focus on the value proposition really for the consumer. Um, so products and brands that claim to be doing good uh, are proven to, to do better also in business, but it's, it's not enough. They also need to deliver actual value, um, actual incremental value. So really the best way to build credibility for yourself and for, for, for your ideas and, and your values is by going after proving, proving the concept step by step. Uh, the, the way I did it was convincing stakeholders to experiment with uh, new brands within certain consumer segments where we had many assumptions to test. Um, that way, we didn't have to use the big brands. We didn't have to take risks to lose some business. Uh, and so worst case, we were not losing anything. Best case, uh, or we were not losing much. Best case, we would, uh, we would be making millions. And this is what happened. Another way you can do it is to add you know, a small, small part to, to the business model that would not completely change the business model, but uh, that would make it a little bit better. And also that would not completely harm the profit. So for example, uh, buy one pair of glasses, give one for free to someone in need when you order it online or something like that. And then uh, my, the seventh learning um, is be ready to fail. Uh, so if you go to the next slide, the slide after. So be ready to fail and be ready to fail a lot <laughs> because uh, not, not everything uh, that, that is uh, the right thing to do works out, uh, definitely not. Uh, and also be ready to have your failures used against you um, sometimes. The key is, uh, is to remain aligned with your values, like, a bit like you know your, your North Star, which uh, guides your decision and your actions no matter what happens around you. Uh, I, I have failed many, many times, and I have hurt many egos by sticking to my values in everything I do. I'm not going to lie. So I even had uh, received disciplinary warnings um, for challenging too much um, the, static quo, the status quo or for pushing some projects a little bit too much. But, uh, you know, for, for in, in one case, for example, when I, I lost a battle, uh, and uh, the, the projects ended up being killed. Uh, but then I changed the uh, role a few months after, and it turns out that the competitor launched uh, that, that same project uh, and, and took the market. Uh, and guess what? Then I got an apology. You know? So it's important to you know, be really true to yourself. And I will also be honest with telling you that it's not always easy because in the corporate world, uh, and I think uh, in, in a lot of uh, structure, uh, being liked, uh, it seems to be the most important thing. Um, but you, you don't have to agree with that because when you think about it, uh, not everyone, um, you know, the, the, the people who have done really great things and achieved great things, uh, I don't know any of them who hasn't been criticized, who hasn't been disliked or who hasn't failed. So that's it for, uh, for my lessons. I hope they were uh, useful to you. And uh, I give the floor to you for any question you have. 
about uh, the topic, about my experience, or uh, anything else. <laughs> Thank you for that, Busha. That was, that was a very wonderful talk and very inspiring. So with that said, I'm going to help uh, grab some questions from the audience to ask you. Uh, the first question is from Sunil, and I'm going to paraphrase this.